Hi everyone. I wanted to do an update to a recent video I did about this embankment, highway embankment and bridge in England. And it was in general talking about the concerns that locals have expressed about settlement with this bridge project. And I laid out the construction details and the design details for what causes these types of issues in typical uh, highway embankment fill approaches to bridge projects. But now I have actual data for the specific bridge that was provided by Value Space. So again, I want to thank Value Space for providing me this analysis to support these videos. I think it's extremely interesting. I think it's one of the more interesting INSAR case studies that has come along. And it's, it's quite uh, elegant, if you will, relative to what you would expect for the situation at this project. So this is the project. It's a14 over A1 highway. This bridge project came to my attention. This video showed up on my feed from Auto Shenanigans. He doesn't have an engineering channel. I gather he covers things of local interest and transportation interest. But he was pretty alarmed about the condition of the bridge and suggested that the bridge itself may be in danger of collapse. Uh, that's not the case. But it was an interesting uh, topic because I wanted to really try and understand what could be going on at this bridge based on my knowledge gained from experience on numerous similar projects. And then I wanted to dig deeper to see if I can actually uncover what was going on in this particular case. So this is the area that we're talking about. It's between Ellington and Brampton, somewhat northeast of central England. So again, I mentioned value space. They did this analysis uh, for me. And the analysis was performed using satellite data from European Space Agency Sentinel satellites, and this is called INSAR. And I've talked about INSAR in several previous videos. I'm just gonna have a quick explanation what INSAR is to provide context for this data in case some of you aren't familiar with it. There's a satellite, there's actually two satellites that orbit the Earth in a pol polar orbit, and a microwave signal is beamed to the ground and reflected back up to the sensor array. And because these flights occur every 12 days and the wavelength of the microwave signal is 5.8 centimeters, they can get very fine resolution of movement. So this is being used in what's called asset management. Insurance companies use it to assess risks, but owners of infrastructure like bridges and pipelines can certainly use this technology as an additional stream of data that could potentially provide early warnings of a, of a problem that was developing with, a, a, say, a bridge in this case. So this is a still shot from that auto shenanigans video. And where the black car is, the first car you see, you can, you can make it out with your eye, but it, it hits a dip there. And that appeared to be the location, the transition from the approach embankment to the bridge itself. So this is what this INSAR analysis looked like from value space. The green means no real relative movement. In this period of time that they're looking at for the data is a three-year period. So March of 2022 to February of 2025. And so if we go to this area, we can define a box. And we can see from that three-year span that only about a millimeter of change has occurred, which means really there's no change. And I, from information I obtained for a nearby bridge, I didn't have the construction details for this bridge, but I surmise that the bridge itself was founded on piling, so a deep foundation, and that it was the approach fills only that were settling. And the INSAR data clearly shows that the bridge itself is, is quite stable. And that's what the plot looks like from that green area in the middle of the bridge deck, just, just a flat line. You have minor variations due to atmospheric conditions and, and other things, but this is as good as it gets in terms of really no change for a structure over a three-year period. Now let's contrast that with these red dots. These red dots correspond to areas where there's been settlement. The north area has experienced over 30 millimeters of settlement in this three-year span, so over an inch. And the south approach there on the south side has experienced 47 millimeters, so nearly two inches of settlement in th three years. And that's what the plot from the north side looks like. You can see a constant trend downwards 
hasn't leveled off yet. And let's go to the south area. You can see even more movement. But again, the trends are clear. That settlement is ongoing. So going back to these plots, you can see that it's not leveled off, which indicates to me, and given these rates of settlement, that primary consolidation is still ongoing. So if you're looking at a half an inch or three quarters of an inch in a three year span, that appears to be likely that that's going to continue at that rate for some period of time, some additional number of years. And I believe they're likely to be in the primary consolidation uh, zone at this point. And you have this plot here from another embankment project where you have poor pressures in the top panel and settlement from settlement plates that was monitored during construction in the lower panel. And you could see that the poor pressures increased as fill was being placed. And then once the fill topped out, poor pressure started to decrease, settlement started to increase, and eventually flattened out. And I don't see a flattening out of the settlement for this A14 over A1 approach embankment. So why do they have this settlement issue here? This is a real marshy area. It's just outside an area called the Fens, which is a bunch of reclaimed land. It used to experience inundation from the North Sea for thousands of years until about the mid 1600s, people started to develop this area put in uh, dikes or levees, remove water, add fill, that sort of thing. So there's a lot of organic matter in these soils. And organic matter does not make for good foundation soils in most cases. They're highly compressible. And in some cases like here, you can't hardly avoid it. So you have to take precautions for the design and construction to minimize post-construction settlement. And having looked at this INSAR data, which again, I think is quite elegant. You know, I did a video saying, hey, I think the issue is with settlement at the approach fills. I think the bridge is fine. And that's exactly what value spaces independent analysis indicated. And, you know, they're doing that from their desks in their offices in Europe. So this isn't a, really an expensive proposition. And I know there are locals that are frustrated that apparently your national highways had promised to monitor the situation and apparently uh, to date has not. And uh, I don't understand why they're not availing themselves of this satellite data. I mean, maybe they're learning it here for the first time that they've had, you know, nearly 47 millimeters of settlement on the south end of the bridge there during the last three years. And then that settlement shows no sign of leveling off anytime soon. So I believe this project was completed in 2019. So it's only a five or six year old project. So again, I wanna send a thank you to Value Space. I was really pleased with this data. And again, as a use case or a proof of concept, I don't think it gets any better than this. I mean, this is what using INSAR for infrastructure is all about. And of course, this is the only highway embankment they have for this project. So. It's a very cost-effective way to, to see overall what's going on, where issues may lie, and what you're likely going to have to do in the future. So I can tell you with these ongoing rates of settlement, they're undoubtedly going to have to do some repair work at these approaches to level off the gap that's going to continue to form there uh, in terms of raising up the level of the ground on the approach before you transition to the actual bridge itself. So with that, I want to send a thank you to those of you who've contributed to buy me a coffee. There's a link in the description if you're so inclined. I also want to send a shout out to channel members. That's an excellent way to support the channel and I really like the interaction I have with channel members. And certainly I want to thank those of you who provided super thanks. So please stay tuned for future videos, everyone.